I've got next caller is uh, Marcus in Ohio who says he has a syllogism that suggests theists are just as rational as atheists. Hey, Marcus. Yeah, hey, Matt. Hey, how are you guys doing? Thanks for taking my call. I'm wondering if that this this one, I, I, I'm wondering if that description is accurate. You you have a syllogism that shows that theists are just as rational as atheists. Yes. But have I suggested that theists can't be just as rational as atheists? Uh I guess maybe you've never said that, but when I, anyway, what I wanted to say, I, I called in a few months ago and I failed miserably. So I bit off a little bit less than I can chew. And I want, I want to remind both of you to be easy on me because I'm a COVID first responder. So, <laughs> so that should get a little, uh, a little, get a little love. We'll give you a little love for that. Yeah. Okay. You get, yeah, you get you one, go. one time where I was going to interrupt where I will hold my tongue. <laughs> Okay, that sounds good. All right, here's here's the syllogism, um, and I think uh, watching your website a lot, Matt, uh, I've went through all your videos quite a bit. Uh, I think you would agree with a lot of these. So, number one, most believers are not mentally ill. Number two, what? IQ not, and EQ not mentally ill. Yes, most right. believers are not mentally ill. Number one. Number two, IQ and EQ, if you do a standard deviation plots, would be similar between believers and non-believers. Three, rationality is derived from number two. So four, believers are as rational as non-believers. Okay. So the first thing is uh, we don't derive a ration, we don't derive rationality from IQ and EQ. I don't know where you got that. Um why, do, why would you say that? I don't understand that. So because rationality. IQ you from, from your brain. Brain is all there is. So rationality would be derived from brain. So, yes, but rationality is not derived from brain. Um, whether or not a position is rational is based on, is there sufficient evidence to warrant acceptance of that position? And does the person accept it? And so you are rational if you accept something when there's evidence and don't accept something when there's not sufficient evidence. It has an, IQ is nothing but a measure of how good you are ta taking an IQ test. And people, uh, you know, with wide range of IQs can all be rational. And every person is capable, uh, well, almost, every, I don't want to say everyone. Uh, generally speaking, the overwhelming majority of people are capable of being rational. And this is why, you know, your whole case here is, Believers, most of them aren't mentally ill. I agree. Uh, some of them probably are, or not to any more significant extent than anybody else is. Um, but mental illness isn't a factor in it because I can be mentally ill and be rational. I can have depression, anxiety, et cetera, and still be rational in certain situations. So it's not a matter of whether or not people are rational. It's whether or not positions the position. should right. be accepted according to reason. And so I'd never say that atheists are more rational than theists, except I believe that the atheistic position is more rational than the theistic position. And so that's how you do it. It's a position that is de determined to be rational or not, not a person, because all of us are capable of being rational and irrational. Okay. All right. I, I like I like everything you say. I, you kind of won me over again. Since that was so quick, can I give you one, one other thing? <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, you always, on your videos, uh, you really don't like reference to authority. And I do medical research. And of medical research, uh, reference to authority or bench studies or books, or clearly, I would agree with you, the weakest evidence. And they need the most skepticism. However, what I teach my residents, when you look at medical literature, I can randomize clinical trials versus reference to authority. You need a lot of skepticism, but it does not equal that they are wrong. So when you get upset with reference to authority, I think you're correct and it's a weak evidence and it needs the most skepticism. However, it does not equate to that position is wrong. I, I've never said it equated to that position's being wrong. So the thing is, there are. Oh, are, I thought you. I thought you did. Okay. 
No, not even close. So the argument from authority fallacy okay. is it, it would be fallacious to say that something is true because an authority said so. That is the fallacy because the truth of something is independent of whether or not an authority recognizes it says so or anything else. It is the evidence for that position that, that determines whether or not it's likely to be true, not the authority. I Similarly, it would be fallacious to say uh, that is simply something an authority said, and therefore it is not true. That's preposterous. There is no fallacy okay. at all. Okay. A, hang on. There is no fallacy at all in appealing to legitimate authorities for information on the issue. There's a secondary fallacy, which is the fallacy of insufficient authority, where the authorities you reference are not authorities in that field. Like saying nine out of 10 dentists think that Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player of all time because they're not authorities. Oh, I get it. Okay, but also that doesn't mean the dentist. I get it. My my example would be you're you're an expert at magic, and I love disappearing and reappearing silks. And if I wanted how to learn how to do uh, 20th century silks, I come to you, and you would say, "This is how you do it. You're an authority on magic. And I think this is the best way." Now, clearly, that's still the weakest evidence. The next one would be a cohort of magicians doing it one way versus the other, and see how the audience liked it. And then the best evidence would be a randomized trial. Uh, we train three different ways, a hundred different magicians in a way of in a disappearing silk trick. And then we go to an audience and then we find out. So you move up the ladder, but that doesn't mean I can't get a very good start by just going to you and saying, Hey, how do you do this uh, disappearing silk trick the best? Yeah. I, I, I don't completely. Oh, so you're fine there, except that which version of a trick is best is completely subjective. So the authorities don't matter. It, it becomes, you know, I could do it the same way that another magician does it and they get a better reaction because they are a better performer. They have a connection with the audience charismatically or whatever that I don't have. So I understand where you're going, but you kind of shifted from something that is objective, like, hey, do vaccines cause autism? to something that's subjective, which is, which is the best way to do this trick? So you might as well be saying, which is the best version of ice cream? Mm -hmm. So Okay, then you could say, which is the easiest way? I mean, you could find an objective measurement. Here, but what's uh, easy for me, sort. what's easy for me is not easy for others. If you watch, so are you familiar with R Rene Levant? No. He's a one-handed card magician. And so the way he goes about doing stuff is going to be different from the way I do it. Is his easier? Not to me, but it's easier to him. So, I mean, you got to be careful when you start talking about what's better, what's easier. Uh, these these sort of um, qualitative subjective well, my, assessments. No, I clearly get it, but you start there. And and you might find out you're, it, it works quite well, or you might find out by better science that it doesn't work quite well. But in, in the end, I, I, in I'm, the end we are I'm in trying to come to a long way around it. In you the, love in rationality, and the greatest, the greatest logician of all time is Kurt Gödel, and he was a theist. And I think you can't easily dismiss that as a sure. reference to authority. This is a sure I can the guy that wrote. Well, he he instead of like you say, if I could go to you as a magician, I wouldn't greatly dismiss the fact that you're saying this is the easiest way to do. Mark, silk. Marcus. The thing that I'm saying I could object to is the the is the assertion that Kurt Gödel was the greatest logician. He's certainly amongst one of the greats, but you don't just get to say he's great. No, at no point has Dave or myself or anybody involved with the show suggested, "Hey, if you have a question about a particular field, it would be a mistake to go talk to experts in that field." That's just boneheaded. Okay. Of course, of course okay. we're in agreement with that. All right. Well, at times you've dismissed uh, really <laughs> questions to very, very good authorities, easily dismissed it. And I think it can be because something isn't true merely be because hang on, I'm putting you on mute, Marcus. First of all, go find instead of saying many times Matt's done this or sometimes Matt's done this or whatever. Give me an actual fucking example, because when we try to kind of do the paraphrasing on this, it seems that you're not necessarily accurately representing what my position is. At no point, 
Now, well, let's say you, you show up with the best authority that you can come up with for a particular position. If I reject the position, I'm saying I do not accept that that position is true. And the mere affirmation by this authority is not sufficient to convince me that it's true. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's false. But yes, you can say, hey, Arrhenius was the greatest authority of all the church fathers, and he says that the Gospels were authored by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I'm going to say I don't give a crap if he was one of the greatest or earliest church fathers. That doesn't mean that what he says is accurate. Yeah, and I'm not sure what the reference to this guy that was supposed to be the greatest at something, why the why it matters that he was a theist. Um, the only, I mean, like the earlier point you made, well, logic. He he was a mathematical logician, Einstein level, and and he wrote the book on logic. And there's no there's no better logic. I mean, it's uh, it's logic beyond belief. Uh, uh, for a birthday present to Einstein, he he solved Einstein's equations in four dimensional space and gave it to him as a birthday present. I mean, everybody considers him of all the mathematicians to be the greatest logician. And so everybody, everybody does, everybody does. Well, okay. I, uh, I would say if you go to a field of all the mathematicians, Euler, Goethe, uh, 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 hang on, uh, hang on. You just switch, hang on. You just switch from greatest logicians to greatest mathematicians. And those are two things. Well, he was the great. He was a very. He was trained in advanced mathematics. He was a mathematician. He just had a had a special specialty in mathematical logic. No, the thing I'm pointing out. The thing I'm pointing out, Marcus, is that you're being sloppy and hyperbolic. Because first of all, you talk about a uh, girl as the greatest logician, and then you want to say he's Einstein level, which means you are now comparing him yes. to somebody else who is generally to the standard, except Einstein isn't a logician. Einstein's a mathematician physicist. And then you're going to say, yes. well, everybody thinks, everybody thinks. I would strongly encourage you to just try to expunge all of the hyperbole from your vocabulary when you're having these conversations, because not only does it not matter, right. not only does it not matter, who the greatest logician is. It doesn't matter who people think the greatest logician is. And it doesn't matter if everybody thinks they're the greatest logician. Couldn't Kurt Gödel still be wrong? Well, sure, but it would take a little... And that's all that it takes. I guess, I guess. Hey, uh, yeah. thank you for everything. I, if, you, if you're if you interested in no, uh, no. one last thing, I got one last thing. No, no, no. I, I want to address this. Okay. If Go ahead. The, the fallacy is that X is not true merely because an expert says so. You've just acknowledged Kurt Gödel's oh, an expert. I agree ex with that. Oh my God, would you stop and let me finish? Okay. You just agree that Kurt Gödel, we'll, we'll go ahead and call him the greatest logician, but you're agreeing with yeah. me. He could in fact be wrong. Yes. Which means that if he says something, it is does not mean it's true. Well, that's a, that's an all. Pro, you have to then do probability. How probability he likely is true? That's that you start that with all your conversations. What is the probability, and that's how you define whether something is rational. How does the evidence? What is the probability that the evidence says? Uh, you know. So for me, even probability that God exists is greater than ninety percent. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, Richard Dawkins <laughs> says it's less than one tenth of one percent, but and for it, some reason, we all do probabilities. Oh, okay. What's if, that? You, if you are 90 percent confident that a God exists, why the fuck aren't we talking about that rather than this particular little fallacy and misunderstanding of, of you misunderstood what my position was. You came in with a syllogism to show that theists can be as rational as atheists, which is something I've never rejected and absolutely accept. Why aren't we talking about why you are 90 percent confident that a God exists when you're calling into the atheist experience and we're not confident? Why isn't that the subject? Well, uh, only because it's a much smaller topic. If I did the other topic, I mean, you've, uh, you've beaten D'Souza and Peterson and 
all these great thinkers, uh, there's just no way I'm going to make any progress in why I think God exists. And it really doesn't come down to a rational thing. It comes down to it's a life enriching thing. For so me, say, uh, my experiences are so enriching that it is, it's, it's fun for me to uh, like music or art. It's, it's just, it's just part of my experience. Okay, but that's but, but, that's but Marcus, Marcus, if it's it, do you play any instruments? No, okay. <laughs> music. I love music, but I'm I'm not. Do you know anybody who writes? Songs? Do you know anybody who writes songs? Do, what? do you know anybody uh, who writes, no. uh, writes books? Yes. Okay. If they're convinced that there is a muse, an actual muse thinking agent that is outside of them, that is infusing them with ideas, if that enriches their life, what the hell does that have to do with whether or not it's true? I don't care if something, in, I mean, I appreciate things that enrich my life. I'm talking about whether or not it's true. And when I, I think, I believe if I heard you correctly, you're sitting there saying, Matt beat D'Souza, Matt beat, you know, so-and-so, Matt beat so-and-so, so, -and -so, so yeah, I'm not, yeah. any, if you are sitting there thinking that I beat these people in debates about God, and that you're not going to make any headway. How on earth can you be 90% confident? It's just that my, my experience is so strong. It's almost as strong as smell or color or anything else. And I kind of believe I have to, my senses can be fooled very quickly, but I have to falsify them before I change my senses. Something's going to remain blue until I can falsify it. Sure. And I can well, falsify you it. You know, so, and my senses are almost for uh, for religious experience are as strong as those senses, and okay. I can't seem to falsify it. Good. So here's the thing. First of all, you, you just acknowledge you can't seem to falsify it. Does that is it in fact falsifiable? No, that would be a Karl Popper uh, science thing that says you can't ask a scientific question unless it's falsifiable. But that's not written in stone either, Matt. Uh, a lot of people disagree with Karl Popper. Okay, fine. Do you? No, I like Karl Popper because that's how we so. make progress. So. so let's not come up with diversions because I'm trying to get on track here. You're now saying that your sense of the divine is on a par and equal to your other senses. Yes. I, I would like for you, as, as simply and briefly as possible to explain what you mean by that, because all of my other senses are demonstrable, testable, like I can see something in front of me, I can touch something in front of me. Can you see or touch God? No, but using a blue, for example, it is more concrete than God, but it's still kind of questionable. There's a whole school of philosophy, whether it exists or not, and it's not just an experience that's made up in your mind. There's color realists, but there's other people that are, uh, le I mean, there's no reason that electromagnetic waves should have any color, and no physics oh textbooks God. even talk about color as a part of either mass or energy. So I know what's, I know what's or, happened, Marcus. You, okay. you, have, you have confused the map for the place and have decided that things like color are real but nebulous, and therefore used that as an excuse for your for what's your personal experience of the divine to claim without evidence that it is real but nebulous. That's probably right. I think you really hit the nail on the head. I've never, and I've been thinking about this for ages. Yeah. And so it's, the issue but is, is that how do you show that it's real? Because I can, when it comes to something like color, while I don't think color exists, colors are the labels that our brain puts on our experience of something real, that's the thing that we can test. We can test it with machinery, we can test it with other people, we can independently verify. If I, you know, even if somebody's colorblind, they could sit in a room with a bunch of other people who aren't colorblind and become well-deservedly, reasonably, rationally convinced that all of these people can see color. And that's, you can just allow them to hold up, here's a red one, here's a green one that I can't see any difference before between these two, and ask them which one is red and go person to person. And when they all identify the same one, no matter how much switching you do or isolation you yeah. do, yes, it, would, be yes it would be much, much, it would be much, much harder to map a religious experience 
There's but no doubt about that it. doesn't make sense, Marcus, because you just said that your religious experience is on a par with other senses. So why yeah. would it be harder to map? Yeah. Uh, that's the million dollar question. I, and and I, I, I don't know. It's just built into my uh, DNA as much as color, taste, or hearing. And why I cannot map it exactly, I don't know. I don't know. Those things aren't built into DNA anyway. Hey. I'd start asking myself if I were you. Okay. Hey, why is it I'm saying that this particular experience is of equal uh, impact and 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 validity as other experiences when I also admit that it's absolutely not because I can't verify it the same way I verify the others? Well, you've really cleared up a lot of things for me today, Matt. I and I and you also reassured me on some of those things about uh, authorities can't be wrong, so I misinterpret some of your things. Uh, one last quick thing I'll tell you and then let you go. Um, when Dawkins writes uh, uh, God delusion, he's making a medical mistake. He should really write God uh, uh, hallucination. A delusion is like the three of us are by a, a, by a fence or by a bush and we hear a rustling. Two of us see a bird and the third guy says it's a guy with a knife. There was a real stimulus, but there, he misinterpreted the stimulus. A hallucination medically is that we're all three there. We don't hear any stimulus. Nobody does. And the guy still sees a, a guy with a knife. So uh, medically wise, uh, he, he, uh, uh, it's not, if you think a, a religion is a delusion, it's not really a delusion. It would be a true hallucination. It, no, delusion is an appropriate word for it. Hallucination would be a, a specific type of of, of delusion, a an experience that an individual has that d isn't t tied to any external stimulus. A delusion is a a belief held and maintained in the face of an absence of supporting evidence and evidence to the contract co contrary. Until somebody that, demonstrates that may be your that may be your that may be your philosophical definition, but that's not the medical definition. The medical definition I, is I, uh, I don't give a delusion is a misinterpreted stimulus. Well, I think he was writing. I, mean, I think he was writing a philosophical book, not a medical book. Yeah, was, Doc, think, was Dawkins okay. a medical doctor writing right. a medical definition at all? Uh, it's just by the American Board of Psych. It's by the World Board of Psychiatry is how they interpret delusion versus hallucination. It may not be obviously. It's not as much interest to you as I thought it was. But, was Dawkins? Uh, I do. A, Marcus was Dawkins a medical yeah. doctor? writing about medical definitions of things, or was no, he a no. scientist writing a philosophical book? Yes, yes, you got, you got me again. Okay, we're going <laughs> <we're gonna> to move on because <laughs> things back now. Thanks, Marcus. All right, no, hey, no. Thank, thank you both so much. Uh, and uh, so I, uh, keep I bailed out on you guys. We had, we had uh, internet problems here. A big storm came through. Yeah, I wasn't just talking to Marcus all on my own for my own pleasure, Ed. Dave, you're in a storm. Yeah, the storm came through, knocked out the internet, but we're back. And I, I, I see that you took care of Marcus all by yourself. So good job. By the you way, didn't need, I, you I, didn't I, need me anyway. Yeah, just for Greg's notice, you, you might have to reset the the thing now that Dave's back because I'm getting a slight echo from Dave. Yeah, I, I am too. But they know how to fix that, and it'll be fixed probably before we get to the next call. Uh, 